Now, of course, we're going to need some way to hold the batteries into the motorcycle. This is going to be a custom battery rack that's going to hold them in there for us. Now, for me, I found this to be the most challenging part of the project, and part of that is just that I, I really had very little fabrication and welding experience before. Now, my first version of this electric motorcycle didn't use any welding at all. I actually just used some bolt-together technology. Uh, very simply, the batteries were sandwiched between a couple different pieces of metal, uh, which were held together by a threaded rod, nuts and bolts. Uh, very simple, it worked fine. Um, I just, more than anything, I really didn't love the look of it. I was starting to learn welding, so I thought it was time to make a nice looking welded battery rack. Now, of course, the battery rack has to uh, fit all the batteries. Um, because of size limitations of your frame, you might need a certain orientation. You're going to have to play around to figure out how to fit them in there. And then once you do, the battery rack has to hold them in place solidly so that they're not vibrating, they're not moving around at all, that the batteries are really going to be a solid part of the motorcycle. Uh, another thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to keep all the battery rack clear of the posts on here. And that, that can actually be challenging. Like I found uh, the batteries I'm using here have posts both on the top of the battery and on the side of the battery. Uh, so it was a little bit more limiting in exactly how I could hold the batteries here. Another thing you want to keep in mind is why lift these heavy batteries trying to figure out how to fit them in there? Uh, really, you'd be better off using some sort of a CAD or cardboard aided design battery uh, with just a little bit of cardboard and tape you can make a mock battery the mock battery uh, much lighter weight much easier to handle and you know what even if you drop it on your foot it's really not a big deal but this will let you easily experiment with exactly how your batteries are going to fit into the motorcycle and in fact the batteries are not the only thing that you can mock up like this in fact Here's just a simple uh, 2D representation of the motor. So with a couple of mock-ups, we can figure out exactly how the motor and the batteries are going to fit into the cycle and make sure that there's enough room for them. Now the batteries that I'm using, one neat feature about them is that they can be mounted in just about any orientation. So I found that to make them all fit in here, the bottom ones would be vertical and the top ones would run in the traditional horizontal design up, up above them. Uh, one thing I did find though, was I was gonna be cutting it really close with the gas tank. And in the end, I actually cut a little tiny notch out of the gas tank, which is fine because the gas tank's hollow anyways. Now keep in mind, your cycle frame's probably going to be different from mine. So exactly how you design your battery rack's going to be a little bit different. Now, another thing is this is just a standard frame, but on some motorcycles, this front part actually drops out. It unbolts and it's completely removable. Now, that's actually an advantage because the batteries are basically squarish and motorcycles tend to be slanted or triangular. So I went with this design here, kind of stair-steppy, to make them fit in well with this angled front bar. However, if that's completely removable on your cycle anyways, why not remove it and replace it with a custom piece that's more vertical and will fit your batteries better. So let's come in close and we'll take a look at some of the details of my battery rack. So we'll start by looking at the front of the battery rack and then we'll also show you the back and the top. So from this angle you can see that we've got three main battery brackets, one that holds up the bottom batteries, one that holds down the bottom batteries, then above that, we have one that supports the upper pair of batteries, and the two upper batteries both have a strap across the top of them, holding them down. And that's using some threaded rod to go from that tie-down strap to that tray underneath. Now, that tray also connects directly to the frame. It's important to remember that I did not drill any holes in this motorcycle, and I wasn't welding anything to the frame either. It was all reusing existing points of contact from the engine and transmission. For example, let's look underneath. Here I've got a piece of unbreakable mirror so we can look up under the motorcycle because the bottom bracket isn't just this part under the battery. It also stretches along the rails under the motorcycle here. And that's uh, 
because there's a couple of points sort of sideways to connect uh, straight into the frame of the motorcycle. There really wasn't much from the top. Another thing you can see from this angle is that there's a piece of metal between the two bottom batteries and that's uh, uh, what, what holds them up because there's sort of a seam of batteries between the two otherwise. So here's an alternate view of the front. From here you can see I had some little bits of steel pipe that I welded on for the, uh, the threaded rod to go through. Down here, we've got the plates that go from both the bottom and the middle down to existing connection points on the frame. And then those just use a bolt with a nylock nut. You always wanna make sure to use either nylock nuts or split ring washers, um, anything that's gonna keep from coming loose. Uh, alternatively, you could use uh, some sort of a thread, thread lock. And then of course, any power connections are covered with rubber boots and any connections not used are also covered. These side ones are kind of nice though for testing with a voltmeter or for individual charging of batteries. Now from the back here we can uh, see a couple other things like for example these middle two brackets both have a little piece of pipe welded on there for the threaded rod to go through with a nut that compresses this down to hold the bottom battery in place. You can see the bottom bracket is welded to that kind of side rail and the threaded rod goes through a hole through that, and if I point down at the mirror underneath, you can see that there's a threaded, uh, a nylock nut on the bottom that holds that in place as well. That side rail also becomes a mounting point for the motor plate, uh, giving a, one more point of attachment for the motor to connect to the frame of the cycle. You'll also notice that the side rail extends back where it's connected with threaded rod directly to the frame of the cycle. So once again, nothing is actually welded directly to the frame. There's no new holes drilled or anything. Uh, rather, I'm just using, uh, reusing all the existing mounting points. So with the gas tank removed, you can see it's just the threaded rod going into a cross piece to another piece of threaded rod that holds the top down. There's a little bit of a, a foam rubber between the two just to make it fit nice and snug without digging in too much to the top of the battery. Also, we've got some nice big rubber battery boots over the top to prevent uh, um, any metal coming in contact with those terminals ever. And this is nice and clear of our battery terminals. Also, there's just enough room under the hollowed out gas tank to allow for mounting a battery charger right here. So there you go, there's the basics of how I built my battery rack. Of course, yours is going to be a little bit different, but I hope this at least gives you an idea as to how you can approach it. So let's finish off this section by taking a look at a montage of the work that I actually did to build the rack.